the first thing we're going to do is populate our jig with our ties. Skipping the second one in from the end from both ends, and I'll show you why in a little bit. And these will be the, the jig that we have facing down to the end of the rail. Molded in rail genders and hold the gauge for us, so that's not a problem. And because we're using a sprawl or slip on rail genders, we're going to use one of our old ties that we've been using previously at the two entry spots on the end. Now we're going to get the rail to populate. And that sits down perfectly in the ties. And we use one of our old style rail trainers at each of these, or excuse me, tie plates at each of these old style ties. And now it's just a matter of screwing everything together. We use four screws here on the end, and that's just because we need the, the four screws here during transport. And you notice I haven't put any gauges on here yet because this is the first one we built. And we want to. Gauge is perfect. So now it's just a matter of assembling the track down. It seems to go together together a lot faster, uh, less prep work. But don't the tie plates are already there, except for the two tracks, two ties at either end. Yeah, and no tie cutting. No tie cutting. So that step was left eliminated completely. We, in fact, we used a tie, tie milling and cutting jig 
covered with other stuff. So, much a, better. A lot faster. And, I think in the long run, less expensive because we don't have to buy saw blades and motor, uh, router bits. That part's all done with the casting, molding. Now for the test.